Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Concerned parents warned school officials more than a year ago about a potential predator at Monroe Elementary. That volunteer now facing more than a dozen sex crimes. Could this have been prevented? The feds have been investigating MSU for years. Tonight, a deal finally in place so Larry Nasser can never happen again. Okay, Mara, but we begin with major rain marching its way toward Metro Detroit. You can see it there on 4 Live Radar. Yeah, it's been a very dry couple of weeks. Well, that all comes to an end tonight. Ben's tracking some real flooding concerns as well, so let's get to him right off the top here at 5. Hi, Ben. Yeah, Kim and Jason, we really only need a, a very small portion of what we're going to be getting tonight, so unfortunately, uh, we got to take it, but 4 Live Radar showing very little activity showing up right now. Most of the stuff that we're concerned about is going to happen after midnight. Some of it's starting to get going as we head towards sunset tonight. So it's going to be a gradual transition from the possibility of just scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon to more widespread, slow moving rain overnight. Here's the bottom line from late evening through tomorrow morning's commute. That's when we're really going to be watching it, especially towards the latter end of that window, mainly in the south zone. Although parts of the metro and west zones, you're not out of the woods. Lowest totals should be in the north zone. And we're looking at one to two inches of rain. Isolated spots could pick up as much as three. Right now, there are no flood watches out, but we're going to talk more about how this is going to impact your morning commute coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, Ben. Our other top story here at five, a deal to prevent a predator like Larry Nassar to roam unchecked at Michigan State ever again. Let's get to Mara McDonald. She's live in the newsroom tonight. Mara, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services had been investigating MSU for years. Kimberly, that's right. And the deal that has been struck here has concrete things that absolutely have to be done. And if they're not done, MSU would be in a heap of trouble, both with the law and financially. For starters, under a deal with the Department of Health and Human Services, the university has to put an official in place whose job it will be accepting, investigating, and resolving discrimination complaints. The second is a chaperone policy. If a patient is having a sensitive exam or procedure, there has to be a member of the health team present. In addition, patients will be given an appropriate gown, privacy for undressing and dressing, and sensitive draping to maximize physical privacy while conducting sensitive examinations. Violate the deal, and MSU faces losing federal funds. Just last week, the former dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, William Strample, was sentenced to a year in jail for two reasons. One, for his failure to monitor and supervise Larry Nasser, and two, for his abusive and predatory behavior toward female students. Back here live in the newsroom, realizing, of course, that so far the only two who have been successfully prosecuted and sentenced in all of this are Larry Nasser and William Strample. It is still unclear tonight whether the former president of MSU, Luanna K. Simon, will actually be found over for trial. We're live in the newsroom, Amara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, to some breaking news now from Dayton, where a friend of Connor Betts, the man who killed nine people, has admitted to buying body armor, a high-capacity magazine, and an accessory for the gun used by Betts. 24-year-old Ethan Colley was arrested by the FBI for lying on a federal firearms form that he used to buy his own handgun. Colley told police that he stored the accessories he bought for Betts at his house to help hide them from Betts' parents. Also breaking this afternoon, another rough day on Wall Street as the Dow drops nearly 400 points. The S&P 500 as well as the Nasdaq also down today. The Dow has now slipped back under 26,000 points. Investors raising some concerns at this point about the state of the U.S. economy. Brand new information tonight into a story sparking outrage from parents in Wyandotte. It involves a former elementary school volunteer facing 15 child sex charges. Michael Beebe, who worked as a volunteer at James Monroe Elementary School, faces those charges in three separate cases. Late last week, Local 4 uncovered Beebe's long criminal history, and now we've learned about an anonymous letter sent to the school in 2018 warning about Beebe's record. Priya Mann got her hands on that letter and joins us live from the school with more. Priya. 
And you know, from that letter, we know school officials were aware of BB's criminal history for more than a year. You know, last week, families in this community were stunned by the charges. Today, they are livid knowing a concerned parent tried to warn school officials. Tonight, they want answers, and more importantly, they want those administrators to be held responsible. Just in shock. I never knew it happened so close to home, you know the school my kids go to. The family says their six-year-old recognized Michael Beebe immediately. But when she seen his picture when we were watching the news, that's when she was like, I know him. What went through your mind when she I said was like, that? I was like, oh my God. Their shock turned to anger after learning other parents had given Wyandotte school officials ample warning about Beebe, seemingly to no avail. If they knew about it, they should have looked into it further. Last February, a parent with four kids at Monroe Elementary wrote to Superintendent Cost directly, informing her that BB had a felony record. In the letter, they said they were concerned he greeted kids during parent drop-off and were worried he was walking around the halls during school hours. They said he also brought lunches in for specific children other than his own. That letter was sent the day after Valentine's, which the parent called a breaking point. BB allegedly set up a Valentine's lunch for four students with roses and gift bags outside the school office. The parents said he was getting out of hand. Something needs to happen. She should be fired or sent somewhere that she doesn't have to deal with children. They plan to attend a board of education meeting tomorrow evening and say the reality of a potential predator so close to their little ones is just sinking in. She knows him. She's seen him before. She's been in contact with him. That's what scared me the most that she's been in contact with him and knew who he was. And tonight, Superintendent Catherine Cost is responding, saying some of the claims were factual and others were not. For example, Mr. Beebe was not able to freely walk the hallways. The letter was shown to Mr. Beebe by Mrs. Wilson, the principal, and they reviewed each incident to get his side of the story. The result was Mr. Beebe was no longer able to be a watchdog as he had become a distraction to other adults. And that statement went on to say that because the letter was sent anonymously, she couldn't speak to those parents directly. Reporting live from Wyandotte, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Well, Priya, uh, Priya, you talked to parents. What are they saying about the Board of Education's meeting tomorrow night? Well, I can tell you they're not satisfied with her response, and they want to make sure their voices are heard, so they plan to show up in full force. Now, that Board of, meeting, a board of Education meeting will be held tomorrow on Oak Street at 6.30 p.m. Local 4 will be there. Yeah. Send it back to you. Okay, Priya, thanks. Well, this doesn't happen here. That's what neighbors are saying after police swarmed a Dearborn neighborhood to investigate a suspicious death. This happened inside a home on Appleline Street near the intersection of Ford and Miller Roads. Our Larry Spruill has new information into that investigation and why neighbors are in shock there. We have been out here for hours today as police are working to find out what happened here at this home in Dearborn. You can see the police tape and a lot of police cars out here as well. Now, I did speak with neighbors and they tell me they are taken back by the heavy police presence. A very calm neighborhood. Um, we usually never have problems like this. So this crime scene is different for D and his neighbors. Because I've been living here for 24 years and nothing like this has ever happened. But he tells me that the first time for everything, Monday, Local 4, the only TV station here at this home on Appaline in Dearborn. Our cameras rolling as police investigate what they call suspicious death. We saw officers with shoe coverings on walking in and out the front door. A spokesperson with Dearborn Police say around 7 a.m. they found a 26-year-old Marine City man dead inside. Gully Nemi lives right across the street. I'm so afraid because, you know, I have two girls, 15 and 11. And now she is weighing her options for their safety. Yeah, if I have a chance, I will move. Of course, yeah. It's something is making me scary, really scary. Like this area is not safety anymore, you know. You cannot feel that you are safety, really. And right now, police have not identified that victim nor the cause of his death. We are live tonight. Larry Spruill. Local four. All right, Larry, the man accused of attacking his landlord and stealing her $17,000 engagement ring is sentenced today. Shane Fountain received nine to 22 years after pleading no contest to charges related to that April attack in Clinton Township. Fountain told, uh, sold the ring to a pawn shop and then left town. Police were able to find him and arrest him a week later in Washington, D.C. Today, the victim said she'll never forget what happened. This year, terror. Confusion and the feelings of violation that I felt then, I still feel today. I feared for my life. I truly thought I was going to die. 
The judge also ruled that Fountain has to pay back the $3,000 he got for selling the ring, and the victim will be getting her engagement ring back. Eight southwest Detroit homes were evacuated after a fire started after a natural gas leak. Just take a look at the fire shooting out of the street at Clayton and Gilbert. DTE tells us those evacuated have been cleared now to return back home. The fire happened by accident during routine work, and it is investigating the cause of that fire. It was another long day in court for the family of Aretha Franklin. Attorneys for the late singer's children met in Judge Jennifer Callahan's courtroom looking to find common ground on a number of issues. One received the most attention was the cleaning, organization, and valuation of Aretha's Bloomfield Hills home. That's the home where the three handwritten wills were found earlier this year. All parties agreed uh, to meet with a facilitator in October to decide what to do with that home.